All right, in this video, we're going to do an example of finding the inverse of a 3x3 three three matrix if one exists. And we're going to do this by using cofactors and determinants. So uh, the first one we're going to do here, we'll find the inverse of this matrix 0, 0, 1, 2, negative 1, 3, 1, 1, 4. And the first thing I'm going to do is find the determinant of A. And there's different notations for the determinant, either the absolute, it looks like the absolute value of A. Um, I always saw it just written as DETA, so determinant of A. Um, to get the determinant of this matrix, I'm going to expand along the first row. So it looks like we'll get 0 times negative 1, 3, 1, and 4, and then minus 0. And we'll have to multiply that by the determinant of, it looks like, 2, 3, 1, and 4. And then we'll add 1 times, we'll have to take the determinant of 2, negative 1, and 1, 1. Well, the first one's 0, the second one's going to be 0. Then it looks like we have 1 times, let's see, we'll get 2 times 1, which is 2, minus 1 times negative 1, which will be plus 1. So it looks like we'll get uh, 1 times 3, or we'll get the determinant to be 3. Okay, so that's one thing that's going to be, uh, we'll have to use that here in a little bit. The next thing I'm going to do is go about finding, um, I'm going to basically use the cofactors. So the way we do that is, um, basically I look, well, at the first, um, you know, if I cover up the first, the first row and the first column, I'm going to be left with this, the numbers negative 1, 3, 1, and 4. So that's what's going to, I'm going to calculate the determinant of that. I'm going to have to fill in some signs here in a second too, so I'll, I'll get to that in just a moment. Next, if we cover up the first row and the second column, it looks like we're going to be left with 2, 3, 1, and 4. So 2, 3, 1, and 4. And if we cover up the first row and the last column, we'll be left with the 2, negative 1, 1, and 1. So 2, negative 1, 1, and 1. Next, if we cover up the second row and the first column, we'll be left with 0, 1, uh, and 1, 4. So 0, 1, 1, and 4. If we cover up the second row and the second column, we'll be left with, it looks like, 0, 1, um, and 1, and 4. Let's see, if we look at, uh, if we cover up the second row in the third column, it looks like we'll have 0, 0, and 1, 1. And lastly, if we cover up the third row and the first column, it looks like we'll be left with 0, 1, negative 1, and 3. If we cover up the third row in the second column, we'll be left with 0, 1, 2, 3. And then if we cover up the uh, third row and the third column, we'll be left with 0, 0, 2, and negative 1. Okay. So we still have to put our signs in here as well. Um, so it just alternates. Um, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is actually calculate the values of all these uh, determinants. So let's see, we would get negative one, it looks like we would get negative 4 minus 3, that would be negative 7. We would get 8 minus 3, 8 minus 3 would be 5, but we have to use the minus sign out front, so we'll get negative 5. We'll get 2 minus negative 1, or 2 plus 1, which will be 3. 0 times 4 is 0, minus 1, so we'll get a negative 1 for the determinant, but we have to multiply that by the negative, so we'll get a positive 1. 0 times 4 is 0, minus 1, so we'll get a negative 1. And then what it looks like, we'll just have 0 times, uh, ex excuse me, 0 minus 0, so we'll get a 0 there. Um, 0 times 3 is 0, minus negative 1 will give us a positive 1. 0 times 3 is 0, minus 2, so we'll get a negative 2 for the determinant, but with the extra negative, it'll switch back to positive 2. 0 times negative 1 is 0, minus 2 times 0 is 0, um, but this time we've got, well, it doesn't really matter, we've got a positive, but who cares, because we're getting 0 anyway. 
Okay, so the next thing we have to do is we're going to have to now do a little reflection. And what we do is we reflect things about the diagonal. So this is going to be the diagonal. Those numbers are going to stay right where they're at. Okay, So I'm not going to move those numbers at all. So let's see. I'm going to leave the negative 7, the negative 1, and the 0 alone. But then we reflect the other elements about the diagonal. So the 1 and the negative 5 are going to switch places. So I'm going to get a negative 5 and a positive 1. Let's see. Uh, the 1 and the positive 3 switch places. So I'm going to get a 3 in the bottom left and a 1 in the top right. And likewise, the, uh, the 2 and the 0 are going to switch places. So my 2 is going to go up here. My 0 is going to go down here. The last thing I do is I take 1 over the determinant. Well, the determinant we found was 3. So I'm going to multiply every entry by 1 third. And this is now going to be our inverse matrix. So if we multiply everything by 1 third, it looks like we get negative 7 thirds. It looks like we'll get 1 third, uh, 1 third, negative 5 thirds, negative 1 third, 2 thirds. We'll get 3 times a third, which is 1. And then we'll get zeros for our other entries. And we have now found our inverse matrix.